G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map. Playing in the color blue as the Marlians. It's Vortex. And on the north side of the map. In the color red as the Rus representing the 3D clan. It's Anatan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mountain Clearing. Look at this. We got a boar nice and early coming out. Just gotta be careful here. This uh, scout might be in a little bit of trouble. Oh my lord, he loses the scout. At 30 seconds into the game, his scout goes down. That is a... T um, uh, uh, the boar just immediately... Wow. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We're here on a casted game. Uh, watching as Anatan loses his scout at 30 seconds into the game now. Of course, scout's obviously not as important on this map. It is mountain clearing. Uh, wow. Okay, bit of a bit of a <laughs> bit of a wild start, and now just going to be cleaning up his own deer in the base. So, welcome. Of course, this is Golden League for anybody wondering. This is uh, uh, the third round of Golden League. Obviously, Vortex, uh, an incredibly talented player, and attend also very very talented. Picked up by 3D Clan. So I'm excited to see what we've got going on for you guys today because we've got ourselves in round three a bit of an interesting rule change. You guys will remember from round number one, no, no stone walls. Round number two, they got rid of that rule and they brought in extra villages. And round number three, we got rid of the extra villages and we said, you can't play certain civilizations on certain maps. And they just picked all the best civilizations on those respective maps and said, you can't play them here. Now, unsurprisingly, the English got banned off every single map, which means in these games that I'll be casting on my channel, you won't be seeing any games at all uh, from... Uh, from that, uh, or from the English whatsoever. Uh, but, uh, obviously... Oh my lord, I'd have a look at that. Look at this pit mine. We got a god tier pit mine coming through. Obviously misses a couple at the back there, but... I tell you what, you'd be very, very happy, uh, to be having that pit mine. On the north side of the map, though. And it's hand. Let's take a look at this hunting cabin. This is a pretty juicy hunting cabin. 55. A very nice, very nice start there. Yeah, so... I mean, let's talk a little bit about that boar. There was a there was a pretty interesting decision there because he actually only had I think it was six villages that he was going for. It might have been seven villages, uh, but normally you'd you'd be wanting to kill it with eight. And it looks like the he was trying to maintain aggro with the scout and he was able to do that, but obviously lost the uh, the early scout there. That's, that's it's definitely going to hurt his early game. Uh, but obviously he picks up the bounty, picks up the bounty from the boar. I wonder if if what what was the thinking about going for that so, so early? And speaking of which. Do we even... Where's the boar on the other side of the map? Was there only one boar? Surely not. Wait, so there's one boar and it just spawns... <laughs> there's one boar and it spawns right in the roost base. I mean, all right, fair enough. You get a boar and no, nobody else does. I'll accept that. I'll accept that trade. All right, well, at this point in time, wheelbarrow is coming through for both players early on. Now, one of the things about wheelbarrow, I, I'm falling less and less in love with the technology wheelbarrow. I mean, it's a great tech... But don't be confused. Don't don't get this. Don't don't get it twisted. Oh lord, get it twisted. Uh, don't get it twisted. Wheelbarrow is not the amazing technology that some will have you believe, myself included. Um, it, it works out to be about a three percent increase across all villages. Obviously, there's a, a a couple of really important bonuses that it gives you. Most most notably, it gives you that extra movement speed, which allows your villagers to get in and out of sticky situations. Obviously, 1.29 movement speed versus the 1.12. So it makes them faster than a spearman, makes them faster than an archer. But we do have, obviously, a Kremlin going to be coming down here from Anatan, looking to put on pressure early on in the game, say, well, I'm going to be securing up this relic. I'm going to be securing this sacred site. And there's no chance that you're going to be taking it from me. Now, one other thing to note is that we don't have trading posts on this map. So means the Malians wanting to trade. Well, bad luck, sir. Vortex now with the Aja. Going to be going through with the Mansa Quarry. Of course, the Mansa Quarry going to become pretty standard here considering there is obviously no trade. Uh, so it would be absolutely ludicrous to go for the uh, the trade landmark. Normally, you'd, you'd expect to see, you know, trade out on the edges. But for anybody who's not familiar with this map, this is called the Battle Dome for a reason. You can see that the entire corners of the map are just covered, littered with mountainous terrain that you'll never be able to get up on top of un unless you somehow manage to find a way to get access to a fighter jet. But obviously, if we finish in the Imperial Age, it's uh, it's it's a little bit before their time. All right. Well, Age Up's come through. It's going to be the Kremlin, of course, for Anatan. We'll ride on board with him as he begins dropping down that hunting cabin right next to the boar. We'll be moving on to that shortly. What a beautiful little spot you've got here. This is your wet dream when it comes to the Ross. Now, interestingly, Anatan... 
focused quite heavily at this moment on, on food and wood. Not moving into gold, not moving into stone just yet. Have, have a look at this. Have a look at this. Really nice. Really nice position here with the gold. There's a couple of reasons why this is great. Obviously, number one, it's really, really safe under the Kremlin. Number two, it's gold in the middle of the map. So you're denying that gold away from your enemy ever potentially taking it. Number three, you leave your own gold nice and safe at the back here because he could have villages back here. But playing against the Malians, obviously the potential for sofa raids to come in at any point could be risky so makes sense to have it so close to the kremlin but the age up comes through on the other side bit of a late age up from vortex five minutes 35 largely because of the early feudal age houses that he had down here on the, on the uh, on the pit mine 140 gold a minute 140 gold a minute you know we often talk about the uh, the rus as like this crazy civilization that's got all this passive gold coming through well, Take a look at that. 140 gold a minute. You're talking... That's like... That's three and a half villages. That is ludicrous. You know, I'm, I'm kind of expecting or kind of waiting for something to happen for the Malians. Imagine this, right? The Malians invests in walking out into the middle of the map. Imagine like your standard Dry Arabia, right? Your standard Dry Arabia. Malians walks a vill into the middle of the map and just does this. I mean, it's kind of prone to aggression, obviously. So you'd have to play some kind of feudal aggression, but... This is crazy. When, when, you, when you see the numbers, like 140 gold a minute, compared to, like, what is it? What's the normal one? It's probably... And he's going for it out here as well. This is what we're talking about. I, I think the smaller one works out to be, like, 120, maybe. Maybe a little bit less, like 108 or something like that. It's definitely... It's, it's obviously nowhere near as high as that. All right. Well, we've got some palisade walls going to be thrown up here. Not just any palisade walls. These are fortified palisade walls. So looking to control the narrative to the front of his base and attend slowly but steadily begins walling up and i'm loving this this is making a lot of sense he wants to keep everything safe wants to keep everything nice and secure back home avoid any raids from the sofas coming through and he just kind of chills out he's, he's obviously heading towards castle h six vills on gold at the moment for anatan riding on board with vortex though he's gonna be going castle age his himself he's only got two vills on gold but look at the gold income that he's got in fact now that we mention it, 333 gold a minute. He's got the Mansa Quarry, 75 gold, which it, isn't it kind of funny, like how the Mansa Quarry is just, just 75 gold. I guess it could be 75 stone as well. So it has that flexibility there. Definitely feels like that landmark's just not as strong. I feel like it, it needs to do something else. For like coming from Age of Empires 3, landmarks did like 46 things. And in Age of Empires 4, it's like, it gives you 75 gold a minute. What else? That's it. Just 75 gold a minute. Can it do anything else? Yeah, you can change it to 75 stone a minute. Huh. Okay. And you compare that to like Age of Empires 4 or Age of Empires 3. And Age of Empires 3, well, it, it's kind of like... The one landmark I'm thinking of is like the, the Chinese landmark where it's like you get eight arc boosters, which are like a skirmisher type unit. And it, it's, it's generating... Uh, and it's generating siege for you, like free siege. It, 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 it's crazy to think that landmarks in, in AoE 4 can be that simple. I guess, I guess uh, if we think about it, uh, I guess it's a little bit different, isn't it? But anyway, we, we, we've we got the high trade house going to be coming down. Now, I'm a little bit concerned about this hunting cabin. This hunting cabin, if I'm not mistaken, looks like it might be smack bang in the ring of where this high trade house is going to be gathering. And I'm fearful that that's going to reduce down the amount that you're able to get from the high trade house age up comes through obviously the farimba garrison gonna be selected here for vortex could go into the big cow landmark but it definitely seems like this map is a little bit too close for comfort when it comes to that so high trade house also uh farimba garrison definitely gonna be the right call here now i think the other curious thing to note uh is that we, we've just played it very defensively i remember early on when this map came out everyone was going crazy on the offense but players have just kind of chilled out for the moment all right um I, i've got no idea what this could be 198 gold that's actually pretty good that's actually pretty decent 198 gold i don't know what numbers he, he's going to be pulling here 100 198 gold is decent uh, i mean i mean specifically with the bounty as well uh, i don't know what numbers he, he's going to be sitting on for his bounty but i would suspect oh my look at this he's just spamming hunting cabins everywhere if there's a map to do it this is it i mean hideout's probably another one of those maps but he should be able to pick up three three of the relics so that'll be nice for him the same time Vortex is going to start walling off. I never would have thought of this map as a, a map where you'd just be walling like a madman. But there you go. 131 gold coming through. Obviously, Berries 
going to be a lot harder to chop through than the forest that's over here that was very easy to chop through for Vortex. So he was very easily able to pick up the pit mine at 140 gold. All right, well, the number's starting to build now for Vortex. Moving into Javelin, throw a Donzo. A pretty standard combo. I, I do like this in the early castle. Springer in placement comes through. Remember the Kremlin. I think it's got a little bit of extra range on there on the spring on the placement no it doesn't look like it. it must it must only be the wooden fortress that gets affected yeah nine tiles increases the damage of arrows fired from this wooden fortress nope increases the sight range nope was it hmm i remember it, it must have been a bug I, I i'm pretty sure it's a bug nice little interaction here as well as the sacred site starts getting picked up very very dangerous though that's one of the things to note like you you've got the the relic I totally didn't even think that you could do that. I, I don't know why I, I didn't think I, and This is the smart move, right? Putting the relic to the backside here, just in case you do get sniped, because you're sitting on 100 health. Springle in placement did, did actually do well on the trade. He tries to get inside, but he's going to get sniped out. Donzo's helping out there as well. And it, it, I like that a lot, right? You know, I was watching a fair bit of Age of Empires 2. I don't know if you guys know, but Nilly's got his uh, his tournament on at the moment as well, NAC. Um, and I was watching quite a bit. Now, I do like the fact that Micro um, in the early game is, is really important when it comes to those archers. It, it's funny watching them play and just seeing how skilled they can be when it comes out to that Micro because there's no dodging these arrows whatsoever from the Donzos, from the Javelins. But now the number's starting to look good. Starting to look a little bit thick here. Anatan on the defensive. Nine archers for him. Siege Workshop going to be going down. Really interesting place. He hasn't actually put either of the relics inside his, um, inside the monastery. So I would say this is a bit of a mistake here from him. I, I just like, just pick up your, your relics, throw them inside, and then try and contest that sacred site. Because, I mean, you've probably missed out on close to 300 gold now, right? Because, or not, maybe not 300 gold, 240 gold. It's, it's been close to a minute that you've been sitting here with three relics in the base. All right, high trade house up to 198 gold a minute. So I'm going to assume that he... Was it 198 gold a minute always? I thought it was like 168, and now it's up to 198. No, probably wrong. Javelin throw is pushing in here. Vortex looking to try and punish Anatan. Plenty of units inside that Kremlin. Village is going to get poked out. He manages to take out two. But still that Kremlin doing absolute work. Crossbow is coming in as well from Anatan. A whole, a whole bunch of archers on the defensive. Five armor for these Javelin throwers. Seven damage for the archers. So they're only going to be do taking two damage a pop here. And you can see just the amount of damage that gets done to these archers. You don't even see their health bar go down. They, it just it just vanishes. And now going to start splitting. And this is where the javelin throwers just really take off. When you've got micro as good as Vortex, it, it's, it's going to be wonderful for you. Really, really well played here by Vortex. I love the way he's splitting up his shots there. Just having a great time. Keep in mind, he knows that these, uh, these units on the front will eventually die, even though the timer's on them are 44 seconds away. He, he seemed to be ignoring them, but the sacred, sites do, the sacred Site does actually get taken. I was going to say Sacred Sites. No, it is just Sacred Site, singular. Uh, the, the Sacred Site does get taken, and expect a keep to be dropped down very shortly by Anatan, and Vortex all of a sudden gets into a bit of a tough spot, right? Because he's going to need a trap. Fortunately, he's already made a trap. He's got a, a Springwood going to be coming through here, and this is going to start to put on pressure towards that Kremlin. First of the boulders begins hurtling its way towards the base of Anatan. And Anatan, with his nice little pocket defense, holds on a little bit longer. I'm loving the way that he, he, he's really controlling the narrative. You know, when it comes to controlling the narrative, this is what I'm talking about. Basically says, you will not raid me. I will not be raided. I refuse to be raided. You will fight me down the middle. You will fight me one-on-one. -on -one. And we will do this... We will man fight, basically. That's what they're saying. Man fighting. If you guys haven't... Or if you, if you don't know what man fighting is, like, just imagine two heavyweight boxers that don't know how to block. That's 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 man fighting. <laughs> Keep going to be going up. Boulders hurtling into it. Springlord's trying to get a nice little trade out. Javelin number's looking really solid for Vortex. He's still on 18 Javelins here. So the number's going a bit, quite good for him. Now more... More... Uh, <laughs> more, more militia coming out looking to try and surround these doing a really decent job honestly these these militia have got 12 damage dude that's a lot of damage that's that's more damage than a men at arms i'm i'm pretty sure that's more damage than a men at arms it's definitely more damage than a veteran musafati warrior i can tell you that much and i don't even think he's got uh blacksmith upgrades yeah he's got no blacksmith upgrades yet that's actually crazy the amount of damage that they get i'm am i i'm, I'm calling it right now 
I, I think Militia might get nerfed. That is crazy how much damage they do. Trent manages to stay alive. Well done to Vortex. And now Vortex is in a tough spot, right? Like sacred victory. The timer is ticking. Keeps down here over on the east side to be further protecting up this gold. He's taken 1,300 off it so far. Nothing on the back gold whatsoever. Obviously, that passive gold that he's got coming through. It's lovely. How much passive gold is he sitting on right now? 200, 250, 280, 330, 385. So 385 passive gold, 485 from the sacred site, and the, the two relics. And the third relic, technically, if you, you do get it back. I don't remember what we're up to, but uh, I'm just going to go with a lot. It is a lot of passive gold. By the same token, the passive gold from his enemy, you got 140 gold down here. You got 119 over here. You got the 75 and you got the two relics. So everybody's got passive gold income right now. It, it, what's interesting is that Vortex is on 1,500 or 1,300 gold a minute. That's a, that's a lot of passive gold. Well, not, not a lot of passive gold, but a lot of gold income coming through. Most of that's going to be going into the Farimba. It's doing a really decent job of keeping those unit numbers out. And have a look at this. We got five Sprinkles coming out here. That's a lot of Sprinkles. And this, this is someone who really needs to contest this keep. He knows how important it is. The more Sprinkles you've got... Is that... Oh, I thought that was Triple Siege Workshop for a second. All right. So, yeah, I, the, the key factor here is to just keep the trebuchets alive. To keep them alive, you're going to need to watch out for enemy Springles. To defend against enemy Springles, you could go for something like the Horseman. If you go for the Horseman, now you've got to dive and try and hit them with melee. And if you're, if you're making lots of Horsemen, your enemy's just going to make Spearmen. You're also going to have to dive underneath the keep, which might have things like the Springled emplacement or boiling oil, and you're in a whole world of pain. So the best thing you can do is just try and match their Springles with your own Springles. And that's exactly what we see. Springled War coming out right now. Fire away. We enter into the cinematic mode as we watch the Springles look to try and defend the keep. He's doing a decent job on the defensive and well done. Out Micro's Vortex. He's got the numbers advantage. It's a two versus four situation. The keep does go down. So he, he manages to maintain or manages to achieve his goal of taking that keep down. Now the question is going to be whether that sacred site gets neutralized. On the, at the back, on the back side, the Manganel's going to be firing off. More Springled's going to be going down. All of a sudden, Vortex able to take the Springled lead here. His tail was between his legs, but all of a sudden, it seems like he's managed to bite a little bit louder than he can bark. Three traps working down the Kremlin. Obviously, the Kremlin going to be great on the defensive. That Springled emplacement just able to clean up those units on the front side. Still, the Javelin throwers definitely seem to be the hero of this story. Now we've got more production going to be coming down. It's right on the front side here, right where the Trebs can hit it. More Springles. He's going to try and go one Springled against three. You can see there was there were additional Springles up towards that top side. But of course, he falls back. We bring back in the cinematic mode. A slowly but steadily, Vortex grinds down Anatand. Vortex at the moment, one of the best players in the game. You'd have to put him in your top five. Anatan, a rising star. Slowly but steadily. Making his way to the top. He's doing pretty well, honestly. The games that he's played, watching him play up against Beastie, watching him play up against B, he's talented, that's for sure. And look at the sprinkled numbers here. I, I, I feel like at this point, Siege... Th there's so much Siege on the field, and it doesn't seem like it's justifiable, the amount of Siege that they got. Look at the Trebs firing off. Springle's having a decent run at it. It's going to be a three versus three. The Trebs helping out like long-range Mangonels. And the Sacred Site is getting neutralized. Four minutes until the Sacred Site victory does not only approach, but encompass us all. Encompass engulf. <laughs> Let's go with engulf. It engulfs us like a... I was going to say like a black hole, but I'm thinking more like an expanding... More like an <laughs> expanding red star is, is what, what I guess is the best way to, to think about it, probably. Don't, don't think about that. That's, that's just scary. Uh, <laughs> so, at, at this point, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a stalemate, but you've got... Oh, look at this. Oh, unfortunate timing right there. Anatan, beautiful work on bringing those Springlets forward. Yeah, so it's not necessarily a stalemate because there still is that pressure here from Anatan. What I'd love to see from Anatan... See, the, the big thing here is that Anatan's going to need to defend the Sacred Site. He's lost the Kremlin, which means he doesn't have access to the tickets. And that's exactly what he's going to need right now, especially at, at this point in the game. You know, probably have two, three, four tickets stacked up. 
that's gonna that's gonna make a difference especially when it comes to unit numbers being so low these guys are trading out resources or trading out units non-stop so now setting up beginning to focus on the archery range on the left side this is part of why you avoid building these facilities on the front line unless you really have to and now those sprinkles splitting up once again he's got the number advantage and a tan looking to force this fight out right now sprinkled's defense is perfect and now the musa fight is moving up in stealth looking to get on top of that sacred site they they are able to do it sprinkled's yet to push up towards those trebuchets gonna have to go through all of these units more musa fighting moving up he's trying his best and all of these sprinkled wars are fought over over trebuchets that's it and now vortex looking to turn the tide a single sacred site is what this game is about. Whether you can hold it or whether you can take it. The village is getting pulled. Not a Manganel in sight. Village is going to get pulled here from Anatan as well. There's the Manganel. We were just talking about it. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. Anatan. He's coming in off the top rope. I can smell it. Here he goes. Big shot. It goes wide. Beautiful dodge right there. Coming out from Vortex. That's exactly what you'd expect from him. Second shot. He's thinking about it. Going to be unfolding. Looking to hit the back line. Vortex dodges. He moves to the west. And the keeper's going to get up. And with that, you're going to have to fall back from that sacred site. And a tan that is no longer yours to defend, sir. That is mine for the taking, says Vortex. And Vortex, with this sacred site now secured, looks to continue this game a little bit longer. Manganel. Man Manganel. Watch out if there's a second one. Did get a big shot in on the villagers, but the Vill's able to s s stay alive. And look at them sieging down all of the enemy siege here. Battering Ram going to be coming out from Enotan as well. Looks like the out the wooden fortress is actually going to get up. Villagers getting popped right there by the keep. Plenty of Vill's inside that keep. And we can see the Springwood emplacement coming through on it. Treb's going to start working down on that backside. And Vortex in a really good position. More Vill's going to be coming out, looking to burn down this, this battering ram. But the sacred site, it's still alive. And it's gone. The sacred site has been neutralized. Vortex looks to secure his position in this game. I tell you what, Vortex, he managed. He, he, he bided his time. I don't know if he bided or bowed or bitted. <laughs> he was biding his time and the time has come and he was successful in his neutralization of his enemy. Let's go with that. And now you're in a really difficult spot here for Anatan. Anatan's in an incredibly tough spot because his enemy has now got the tempo advantage. He lost a few villagers, though. Vortex actually lost... Oh, God. Vortex lost a lot of vills. Oh, how many how many workers did he lose? He took out all of the siege here, but at what cost? And now, does Anatan... I mean, at this point, Anatan's just got the numbers right. Like, he's got the, he's got the, the passive in 223 gold a minute. 62. Let's... We're doing more calcs. We're not going to do more calcs. <laughs> we can't do more calcs. I'd love to see another wall come across here. Just to make sure that you're not going to get raided on this point. Five sofas in the back. Whew, watch out from the showers, that's for sure. So, the problem that you're going to have right now for Vortex is that you don't have enough villagers. He lost a huge amount of villagers there. I can't believe the amount of villas he lost. And that's going to allow him a... Anatan has all of a sudden got a, an opening here. Now, obviously, the sacred site is yet to be taken by Vortex. And once it does get taken, you know, you can get your stopwatches out, count it down 10 minutes. But my fear here is that even though you were able to take out the siege, that wasn't the goal. The goal was to capture the sacred site, and you did that. There's a part of me that thinks that maybe Vortex jumped the shark a little bit, got a little bit excited. And now running through, Musafati in stealth, remember. They're going to pop out at the last second. Immediately striking down that Manganel. Musafati having a tough time. Sacred Sight captured. And slowly but steadily, that Manganel, look at it maneuvering back, hits the front side, manages to get off a very point, quick point blank shot. And that keep is going down. He's only got 160 stone in the bank. Probably needs to switch over. Switch over the Mansa Quarry. Come on, that, that's one of the key features of the Mansa Quarry. And now you're, now you're in a really difficult spot because this whole time, one TC from Anatand, it might not seem like a lot. But when you lose that many villagers in a fight like that, it's going to really affect your tempo for the rest of the game. Anatand is able to just sit here on his siege workshops. In fact, where are the siege workshops? One siege workshop. That's, those are rookie numbers. You need to get those up. He, he's literally just making like Manganel 
springled and trebs. And I think that's just because of the, the, the importance of having trebs to deal with enemy keeps or positions, having springles to defend them, and then having mangonels to defend those. I think that's what it is. We're now going to have to fall back with the siege. Treb number one goes down. Really nice snipe there from Vortex. 750 resources down the drain. In fact, are they still 500, 250? They are. Okay. 750 resources in the blink of an eye taken out. Now that keep is burning. One more shot. I think he's giving up holding it. Yeah, he's giving up holding it. One more volley and that's it. Sprinkles now moving forward. He's outnumbered four to two. Actually, I take it back. Anatan's got four to four. And the keep does go down. So with the keep, oh, look at look at the trebs, the way that they, they fire off their shots, directing them towards the units. And now Anatan really starting to build up those military numbers. And this is the part that, that I was concerned about. Zero, um, zero wood a minute coming through for Vortex. Vortex needs to hold this sacred site. He's got eight minutes left on it though. I fear that he's just lost too many villagers. He lost way too many villagers in that fight. Where does he go from here? When you lose that many vills, you feel very connected to winning now. You need to win now if you lose that many vills. Because there doesn't seem to be a way that he can come back into this. I mean, realistically, maybe Vortex could have added in a second town center. Right? Like, if, if he went for the second TC, does he have... Oh, but he doesn't have stone. Wait, no, Vortex! Quickly, switch the Mansa Quarry! <laughs> switch the Mansa Quarry to stone! I, I definitely feel like stone is what we need right now, not gold. I mean, he's doing a really good job with the whole gold thing, but... I mean, at the end of the day, he's actually draining this gold pretty damn quickly. Is this where you put in a second mining camp? I feel like you'd get such value out of it. And now the push is going to be coming out. Anatan says, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of you, you damn Marlians on my mountain clearing map. And the numbers coming out from Anatan looking really solid here. Mangano in the backside. Look at the archers. There's going to be way too many archers to deal with, or not enough javelins to deal with all these archers. And Veal's going to get pulled. I think that's good game. Even if he takes down all of these siege units. And the Mangonel shot from the top rope. Randy Orton, the Mangonel, with the big RKO. He comes in so much damage onto all of those villagers. And that's surely going to be good game. There's no way he survives this. The sacred site is neutralized. The, the, the threat of the sacred victory no longer here. And with all the villagers dead and Randy Orton in the back still alive. Go on, Randy. Stay alive. You can do it, buddy. Oh, he goes down. He, get, he gets it. But at the end of the day, there's just way too many units here. And Anatan clears it out. Good game gets called. Fellas, go check out EGC TV. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can watch this live. In fact, it'll be live in about two hours time. So make sure you come check it out. Make sure you come say good day. I'll be there. You'll be there. And it'll be an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.